touch his ass. I heard you like my ass. <laughs> Two years ago, introduced the Wrecking Crew. The Wrecking Crew. Yeah. And I was with my friend Janice, and I said, you know what, we have to do something like this with Emmett. How did you get acquainted with Emmett that you would realize that you were? Well, it was to Janice. She, she was like. Uh, I want people to give it up for Janice. Janice, yes. come on, baby. The merry go round. She was a junior high school girl in love, really, with Joel Larson, actually. That was the truth. <laughs> Emmett, Emmett was kind of the secondary thing, but Joel was the stud. You know, he won the dating game twice. That's incredibly interesting. Now... Oh, what a bitch. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bitch, because I, I want to know the funk of this whole thing, man. All right. I want to know what really, you know, goes down. I mean, your quest was with the director to find out why he'd gone missing for 35 years. What did you learn? What I learned was that He'd gone missing because he wanted to go missing. Right. right. Right? He was done with it. He'd done his songs. He'd expressed himself in every way possible. He'd done, you know, three or four dozen pop songs, which encapsulated everything, and he was finished. Yeah, I think I absolutely understand because I think it's presumptuous for people to think he isolated and he escaped. You know, that is a choice he made. I'm, I'm wondering what drew you to that man, that man, rather than making a documentary about somebody who's enormously successful. Two components, and that one is, is that we could finish it, and number two is that we could use someone else's money. <laughs> that was the big deal. You know, get it done, get it funded, and, and we were happy that we could actually accomplish Did it. Did you speak to the wives? <laughs> I spoke to my wife, and she said, we're not using our money again. <laughs> That's for sure. This is a producer? This is a producer talking? I wonder if you spoke to the wives. Whose wives? Emmett. Emmett didn't have a wife. Oh, oh, he did have a couple of wives. No, we didn't talk to his wives or his children because they were very hard to reach at that point because, you know, they had been through a lot See, with To Emmett. me, the betray betrayal and deceit are two very key words in this film. Yeah, well, <laughs> we didn't make it because it was politically correct, obviously. Um, yeah, that's the way Emmett feels about it. I'm sure there's another side of that story, but that wasn't the story we were telling. We were telling the story of this creation of this beautiful music, and, and Emmett was the spokesperson for it. The truth is, both of his ex-wives aren't speaking to him, but all of his children aren't speaking to him. And there's a story behind all of that, but that's an, for another filmmaker to make. Our story was, this is a man who gave everything to his music, and yes, I, I think his wives and his children did feel a little bit left out of that process. But in this story, Emmett gave everything and was left alone. Why he was left alone, that we just don't know. Um, Mark Shaw, is the cousin or son or something of those people. And we could have gone in that direction. And, and I was in very, indeed, in, in the beginning, wanting to go in that direction, trying to find the, the people who had screwed Emmett, ultimately, who had taken his music in perpetuity, only to give him his publishing just a few years ago. But the choice was not to go in that direction. Right. I understand. I and that was the money, to be honest. I think you made a beautiful movie, and I think that you brought yeah. this man to these people in this room. And Thank you. You know, many people. And I, and I applaud you for that, man, because he should, the most important thing is exactly what you're saying, bringing Emmett Rhodes to people to enjoy, of course.